All right, so you guys know that I love traveling Texas. It's a single state that can take you anywhere in the world. You wanna to go to Paris? That's easy. You wanna to go to China? Done. It's just outside of Beaumont. How about Egypt, Italy, even London? Uh, yeah, but today, you know, I'm feeling a little bit Greek. So let's head to Athens! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Athens sits at the doorway to East Texas, about 75 miles southeast of Dallas and 90 miles northeast of Waco. But unlike the other Athens, there are no international airports or nasty layovers necessary. While the Greek metropolis has over 3 million people, the Texas version has about 12,000. Athens, Greece goes back about 7,000 years. Athens, Texas, 150. Greece may have the Acropolis, but Texas has the Henderson County Courthouse, which is pretty much the same thing, meaning this is a day trip of Herculean proportions. Friends, Athenians, day trippers, lend me your ears, for today is a day of grand and virtuous endeavor. Today we day trip to Athens. Should we prevail, our legend will live on long after our bones are interred into the earth. But should we fail, then cursed shall be the breath that ever utters the words, day tripper. Come, let our conquest begin. The journey has begun. I think it rather joyous. But Chet made us dress up. To be his own Greek chorus. Comedy or tragedy. What will this day trip hold? But tripping in a toga is gonna, gonna get, get real old. They'll get used to it. So every journey begins with a single step, which is our first stop. To learn a little history of this East Texas town at the Henderson County Museum. So this museum is housed in the old mercantile building. And back in the day, the mercantile was where you went to get everything you needed. Food, supplies, tools. I mean, look at all this stuff. And while this building no longer provides goods to the town, it does provide something else just as important, and that's history. Going back to before the turn of the century, this museum has display after display of artifacts and two floors of exhibits which if you start looking close enough, contains some pretty cool stuff. Family Bibles from the 1600s, early doctor's tools, along with priceless items from times of war. Look at this behind me. This is an original flag from the Civil War that was carried by the men of Henderson County into battle. Check out these teacups. You see this part right here? That, my friends, is a mustache guard. <laughs> That's right, you could drink out of the bottom and none of it got caught in your mustache. And then there's this, the Black Eyed Pea. Because Athens is known as the Black Eyed Pea capital of the world because back historically they've had hundreds of Black Eyed Pea farms in this area. And I think that also makes it the luckiest town in Texas. However, perhaps the biggest claim to fame that Athens has is that it was here in this town where they invented the very first hamburger. His name was Fletcher Davis, known locally as Old Dave, who in the 1880s had a lunch counter on the square, selling ground beef patty sandwiches on fresh slices of homemade bread. Well, the locals loved it so much that they sent Old Dave to the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri, where he shared his creation to raving reviews. The story even hit the New York Tribune, and from that moment on, America was hooked and the hamburger made history. Sadly, Old Dave and his burger counter are also history. So Old Dave's burger counter sits somewhere along the north side of the square, and sadly, it's long gone. However, Old Dave's memory and all of its burger glory is still alive and well at the Railway Cafe. It may be located just off the old railroad tracks, but make no mistake, the Railway Cafe is laying its own tracks through Athens' restaurant scene. 
Stops include the familiar Burger Town, but also destinations much further. There's not a place like this anywhere around. And when we first started, it was like, this is the best place in town. Now it's the best place in this part of the state. I think it's fabulous. I think we're really lucky to have it here in Athens. Oh, they've got some, some good pasta here, some dessert. You know, they got all kinds of fries. Everything's fresh. Justin and Deanne brought that with them from Austin. Yes, owners Justin and Deanne Boswell are as loved around here as the food. They lived across the U.S. only to find themselves back in their hometown running its hippest culinary attraction. Man, this place is awesome. So how long has it been open? We've been open about three and a half years. Fantastic. Now, was it your long-term goal when you were growing up? Like, I'd like to have a, a restaurant here in my hometown? I have a degree in psychology, so not really. <laughs> I, I, you know, I did that and then I started cooking to make money and uh, realized that I could get paid to do what I love. And, and how would you describe this place as someone who's never been? Because it feels or like a really hip place just off a historic square. We have a little something for everyone. You know, burgers, we also have shrimp salads, we have pan-seared crab cakes today, so you know, it runs the gamut, yeah. Seriously runs the gamut. Yes. So obviously the hamburger was invented here in Athens, so what are you doing to sort of carry on that tradition? You know, we try and have a great burger on the menu, yeah. it's uh, all beef, it, you know, salt and pepper only, that's it, and today the toppings on the special burger are French brie cheese with bacon and a fried egg, and then we have one norm normal cheese burger on the menu and then we have a uh, pimento cheese bacon burger on the menu as well which is our homemade pimento cheese with a couple strips of bacon oh yes yeah, it's good it's that, good it's, that's it's awesome. good i literally want to eat everything in this kitchen but i am compelled by both history and pimento cheese to order a hamburger but only after an appetizer of equal local importance all right, so we're in the Black Eyed Pea capital of the world, but here's a fresh spin on the age-old vegetable. Black Eyed Pea hummus. Oh, man. I don't know why we ever started using garbanzo beans in the first place. And then local cucumbers turned into local pickles. Okay, so it was hard to hold back on the hummus, but I had to save room for this burger. I got a pimento cheese bacon burger, and this one ain't done in the old Dave's meat and white bread kind of way. They have kicked it up a notch. Mm. <laughs> and I mean, look at that thing. Homemade pimento cheese. Then you got all the sides, the veggies, sweet potato fries. I don't know if this needs anything else done with it. It is just perfection. Mm. You know, small town Texas squares used to be dominated by home cooking cafes and barbecue, but more and more you're starting to see these really unique, eclectic restaurants pop up, and I love it. I doubt you'll find a Texas burger remotely this good in Athens, Greece. But another part of Greece that you can find right here in East Texas is our very own Mediterranean Sea. Slightly smaller, but just as blue, and only half a mile from the square at Athens Scuba Park. This is owner Calvin Wilcher. How in the world do we have a lake like this here? Well, back in 1887, this was actually one of the first businesses around. It, it was a brick factory. Got tired of pumping all the water out to get to the clay. They just abandoned it and went and started another hole somewhere. Leaving this one to fill up with groundwater and leaving Calvin with an opportunity. Texas is number three in the United States for scuba divers. You know, we'll average 10,000 people a season through here. We have a lot of shipwrecks and boats and air, jet airliners and things sunk in our lake. So that makes it intriguing for people that get out and practice a little bit, get out for a day and go have fun. And that is exactly my mission. So let's dive in. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Can you believe this water? Athens Scuba Park makes for a great place to get certified. But if you're already a diver, all you'll need is a swimsuit and your dive card. They'll wrench you everything else. Now you might also want a map because there are some things down here you don't want to miss, including a sunken twin engine jet. Now this is crazy. Kind of feels like I'm on a scuba search and rescue mission, surveying a watery plane crash. <laughs> um, we've located the wreckage. Uh, fuselage seems to be intact. Um, controls are a bit mossy. Um, no sign of bodies. Goo! <laughs> Never mind. Not cool, guys. Not cool. Actually, that's pretty cool. 
The Scuba Park also hosts treasure and scavenger hunts all around the lake, making this much more than just a simple scuba. The wheels on the underwater bus go splash, 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 splash. Now there's also an underwater obstacle course of tunnels. Oh, very dark tunnels. Uh, let's hope I make it to the other side. Phew, daylight. Now I know scuba diving can be intimidating to lots of folks, but when you boil it down, it's just breathing and kicking. But it's hard to imagine a better place to try it out than here in Athens, Texas. And talk about an awesome way to kill a few hours. Now, speaking of breathing underwater, Athens is home to some fairly famous residents who are very good at the practice. To visit them, we're heading beside Lake Athens to the Texas Freshwater Fisheries Center. Aimed at educating and conserving, this center's work is critical to freshwater fish and fishing in Texas. Wow. So if you ever wondered how Texas became or how it maintains its status as one of the top fishing destinations in the world, a lot of it has to do with the work they do right here in this building. To tell us more about its many tasks is Texas Park Specialist Larry Hodge. Well, this is incredible. So tell me a little bit about what you guys do here. Well, we actually do four different things here. We have a visitation program where we have about 60,000 people a year come through to learn about Texas native species. Uh, we have an education program for school groups, a share lunker program. And we also have a, a fish hatchery that produces three to four million bass a year for stocking in the Texas public reservoir. Whoa, whoa, did I hear that right? Three to four million? Right, fishing is one of the biggest industries in Texas. There's no way that natural reproduction could produce enough fish to keep all those people who go fishing happy. And it's not just about putting fish in the water, it's also about putting money into the local economies, which helps everyone win. Right. And obviously, these are some of y'all's babies right behind us here? Well, yes, uh, we're kind of proud of these. This is our <laughs> reservoir exhibit. These, these big guard down there, I thought that was a log, and then it started moving. He's massive. Yeah, he is. They, it's probably getting close to 300 pounds. <laughs> Whoa, and then this guy, what's this? That's a blue catfish. They can actually grow to about 120 pounds, and we have had the former world record on display here at one time. Wow, if the big cat is gone, these are definitely his brothers and sisters. <laughs> Violent feeding I've ever witnessed. <laughs> this is so gross. All right, who gets it? You do. You do. Oh! And there's still some other world champs to be seen here at the scuba show. We're going to be in the scuba for you all today, kind of talk to you a little bit about all the different species we have in here. This little baby bass right here is looking at my finger. This is our state fish. It's called the Guadalupe bass. She is our new current world record Guadalupe bass. She is the largest Guadalupe bass ever caught. And she comes in at a whopping 3.7 pounds. Pretty cool, she's still kicking around. But being the biggest Guadalupe bass is very different from the biggest largemouth bass. All right, so this is the Hall of Fame. Really more like Wall of Fame but these are some of the biggest largemouth bass ever caught in the state of Texas. But if you wanna see the big mama sitting at the top of Texas right now, that's this one right here, the current Texas state record. 18.18 pounds, but you know what the crazy thing is, this place is actually putting out bass almost this big into the lakes and rivers of Texas every year. Let's go learn about that. It's called the Share Lunker Program where fishermen share their big bass to hopefully make more big bass babies. This is Juan to tell us more. Chet, welcome to the Lunker Bunker. This is the home of the Toyota Share Lunker Program. Yeah. Angler donates a fish that's over 13 pounds of largemouth bass, okay. and we use it in our uh, selected breeding program. We believe that if you use a big mother, it will produce big offsprings if you use the correct genetics in that fish. These big females are paired with a genetically hunky male, and nature begins to run its course. The birds and the bees become the birds and the bass. Within about 30 days, the eggs have hatched and the fingerling bass are put back into the lakes to hopefully become share lunkers themselves. 
Now we could chase the lunkers all across Texas, but why? When we can catch some big fish right here. So I figured that uh, while I'm here, I might as well cast a couple times. After all, the fishing's free and you gotta catch and release. That means the babies in this little pond have a chance to grow really, really big. Come on, big cats. You know you want it? You smell the stinky goodness of the stink bait? Hmm, no luck. Guess I should've eaten more black-eyed peas. But trophy-winning bass are by no means the only legendary animal that inhabits Athens, or at least in legend. Wow, okay, so here we are on the railroad tracks. But here's the story. You see, there used to be a rickety old wooden bridge that ran across this gap that some of the locals called Thunder Bridge or Monkey Bridge. And now legend holds that somewhere near this spot, a circus train once violently crashed. The monkeys that survived the crash escaped into these woods, but those that didn't survive are said to still be here, haunting this place. Ghost monkeys. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not so sure I believe all that monkey business, but the story actually continues. Many of the escaped monkeys were supposedly gathered up by a man named Medford Fuller, who kept them in cages, doing unspeakable things, hidden away at Fuller Park. Ooh, now this is creepy. So here's the old stone wall that surrounds Fuller Park. And inside is supposedly where Mr. Fuller kept his pet monkeys. And the rumors about this place range from everything, from it being just a kiddie zoo to it being completely insane and demonic. But one thing everyone... Ooh. You know, as brave as I sometimes am, I don't think I'm gonna be going into those woods today. Let's get back to the road. Ah! Huh? Ah! one from monkeys now undead chet survived his first travails but peril lies ahead scarier than bananas hairier than apes higher than a skyscraper the, the big, big apple, apple now awaits that's right the texas version of the big apple new york texas it's up to you new york New York! It's a little different than what I was expecting, I guess. Looks like the Texas city that never sleeps is a bit sleepy these days. But I know something that will definitely wake us up out here. Because who needs skyscrapers when you've got sky zip lines? Okay, so this is Mr. Carson Schultz with New York Texas Zipline Adventures. Well, now this is my kind of New York right here. This this is like looks like we're up in the Smoky Mountains or something. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of a hidden hill range out here. It's a, like the hill country of East Texas that nobody knows exists out here with these big pine trees and all this iron ore rock. We actually operate from right here at our home site. And our course was the second course in the state of Texas, and our course ranges from 150 feet long on our first line, and they get progressively longer and faster until our last line, which is 950. Long. Man, just looking at it, I'm getting excited about getting on it. And so is the crew. We're geared up and ready. All right, so no matter how many times I zip line, my heart always kind of flutters on the first one. But you just got to get it over with and enjoy the ride. Woo! Now, most of the crew has felt the thrill of zipping. But for intern Lindsay, she's a first timer. Oh my gosh, I did it! That was awesome! High five the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a first for Todd. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> Who might be breaking a bit too soon. Sorry, Little turn around bit. and do it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Sorry about that. Okay. But still, yeah. this is a blast. You can even do it in boots. 
You know, with all these really tall trees and these platforms, it kind of feels like we're in the middle of the Ewok village. Maybe it's Swiss Family Robinson, I can't tell. But this is awesome. I mean, look, we are really up here in the treetops. It's the forest moon of indoor, Chet. Get it right. Sorry, Kelly. Star Wars people. I like Star Wars. Every line is slightly different. Some platforms are high, others are grounded. Some require hiking, but mostly just flying. It's definitely an action-packed kind of sport, yet strangely peaceful, but mostly action-packed, especially when you do it upside down. That. that was cool. That was cool. That's the way to do it. If you really want to kick it up, add spinning. That is, if you also want to barf. But no matter how you do it, this is big adventure in Texas's not so big apple. Oh, that felt good. Well, I think we've sufficiently conquered the Big Apple. Now to partake in a New York delicacy for dinner that Athens, Texas has mastered as well at Rounder's Pizza. Serving up local pie at its finest. All right, so what do you think about Rounder's Pizza? We love it. Well, the crust is great, the pizza's good. And is this the pizza you always go for? What That's is this right. one? That's right, that's hamburger and onion. Ooh. With it, oh, extra cheese. Oh no, so it really is all about the cheese. Yeah. Well, how long you been coming to Rounder's? Since it's been open, however long that's been. 20 some years, I think, so yeah, very good. Long. My favorite thing is the cinnamon sticks. Ooh, dessert pizza. Yeah, <laughs> loaded with butter and sugar and cinnamon, all things good. <laughs> so is it about the cheese for you, the crust, the sauce? The what do you cheese. Think? You ever go crazy with something like pepperoni or something wild like that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's honest. Keep it simple. Rounders is a pizza parlor for the people, which is why it's one people's favorite in Athens for over 10 years running. All right, so this is Earl Wilmoth, the owner of Rounders Pizza. Man, so you guys have been voted best pizza in Athens like since the beginning of time. So what's the secret? The secret is in the sauce, the, the dough, the cheese that we use. I mean, we get up here at 730 every morning. Um, and we start our process. I mean, everything is from scratch. Everything comes in the back door raw. I mean, it's really, truly in our product um, and in the people here that's made it uh, what it is today. Dough, sauce, cheese. Dough, so sauce, basically and cheese. the whole thing. The is whole like... thing. Right. So, what's your favorite kind of pizza? We do a Hornet pizza. It's made with our Bud Burner sauce, which is one of our wing sauces. Woo! I might have to get me a pizza that, of that it's today. Good stuff. You got to try the Hornet if you're in Athens, Texas. Very good. I think I will. The Hornet is the high school mascot after all, so bring on the sting. So in honor of the Athens Hornets and upon Earl's recommendation, I went with the Hornet pizza. It's got pepperoni, sausage, little bits of bacon, some cheddar mixed in with the mozzarella. But I tell you what, that Bud Burner sauce <laughs> is even spicier than the jalapenos I usually put on my pizza. But I like it a lot. It only takes one bite. You become a believer. This is good pizza. And with pizza this good, why stop at one? Homemade cinnamon pizza. It's got dough, it's got cinnamon, it's got sugar, and then most importantly, butter. If there's any room left in my belly, it's about to be filled. What, what a day. day. From zipline highs to watery lows, plus something to eat. Chet survived the day tripperous pack, and someday you will too. Just don't wear a toga. We're glad this bit is through. Come on, Chet, can we take these off already? Nope, not done yet, guys. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Good work, Chorus. You want a cinnamon stick? I'm gonna go noodling right now. You ain't pretty, baby, but you're mighty good to eat. A circus train crashed. The monkeys escaped their cargo area, bay. Cargo net, were they in a net? So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Via con Dios, amigos. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting out of here. 
What's wrong? Bad idea to go into Fuller Park. I'm pretty sure I just saw a bunch of dead stuff. Not to mention the creepiest graveyard I've ever seen with only two people buried there and the most massive protective fence around it. With big giant chains. Don't yeah, let's just go ahead and back out of here, boys, and uh, let's do something happy like a swimming hole or barbecue or something. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.